Okay. Okay, thanks for coming. My name is John McNabb. The, name, the title of the talk is Vulnerabilities of Control Systems in Drinking Water Utilities. Sound okay? I get a little feedback here. Um, brief introduction. Um, I started working on this about two years ago and I gave a talk at DEF CON 18 on uh, cyber terrorism and the security of the national drinking water infrastructure, which then led to a cover story in Hacker Japan, um, all in Japanese, so I assume they, were, they liked me. Uh, and then uh, I was selected to write a chapter in a textbook on, um, on uh, chemical and biological threats against public water systems. I come from a public drinking water background more than IT. I helped run a, I was a water commissioner for a small water uh, utility outside Boston for 13 years uh, before I got into IT full time. And so I've been trying to put them together to look at uh, IT security for drinking water and also physical security. Uh, I've also a background as a lobbyist and um, in other non-IT type uh, fields. So I've been speaking a lot on this topic and others. Um, I've got uh, some other talks coming up this year. I'll, I'll be giving this talk at Source Boston uh, next Thursday and, an, and a different talk at ThoughtCon and Hope uh, Number 9. Um, I won't read everything in every slide. I always put more words on the slide than you're supposed to just to remind myself and because you guys can read faster than I talk. Um, but I'll have introductory remarks. I'll talk about general threats, some overview of how a water system works and control systems work, um, overall vulnerabilities of control systems, and there's a whole story, big story there, uh, technical fixes, and uh, then we get into policy and standards, which is the real, and money, which is the real problem. Um, why I'm giving this talk is that not enough is being done to protect our public drinking water supplies. Uh, fortunately, there haven't been massive attacks or even any documented attack on a drinking water facility through IT networks, but that time will come. Uh, the problem is that the issues are siloed. Uh, you get the water supplier experts here. They're looking at water supply systems. You get the IT people here, which are different than the control system people. Um, and then you get the regulators, you get the uh, American Water Workers Association. And so like many problems, the left hand's not talking to the right hand. Also federal funding has gone down to deal with this problem um, uh, for water security as, as well as other water infrastructure issues. That chart shows the uh, reduction since 9-11 when there was a big influx, as you might imagine, for spending and programs looking at this and every other problem. And now it's sort of gone away in many people's minds. Uh, how important is water? Not to belabor the issue. Um, the U.S. U.S. Uh, new, uh, the newspaper I got in my room here today had a front page story about droughts affecting ma major parts of the U.S. Obviously, it's essential for public health. It's also a critical infrastructure, quote unquote, is defined by federal law, meaning it supports basically everything else that happens in society. Uh, you can't operate a business. You can't run a town. You can't um, live. You can't uh, you know live for more than three days uh, without water. Um, but it's also the source of wars and conflicts since the beginning of civilization. It's been a target uh, since the beginning of civilization of terrorists and people having different views than the people with the water or the people without the water trying to get the water. Um, and there's a recent report that came out, Global Risk 2012, that uh, lists water supply crisis as uh, in the top five for being likely and having a major impact. Um, now, we all remember the news last November, I'm sure, about the uh, Russian hacker who burned out a pump at an Illinois water uh, district, which they mistakenly said was Springfield. It actually was Curran Gardner. I put that picture there so I could remember the name of the town. Um, and a lot of the news reports were wrong. They were saying it was Springfield, but it was actually Curran Gardner. Um, so the story was half right. A pump burned out. We never really got an explanation of why it burned out, except I know from my experience that pumps burn out. That just sort of happens. It's a lot of things that happen. There's regular noise. So if you get a cyber attack, how do you really know what caused it? Um, but actually the story eventually uh, settled out and Wired, I think, nailed it in their interview with the, um, there was a Russian, there was a consultant for the water district who was vacationing in Russia. And um, he was remoting into the system from Russia, which is why they found a, a Russian IP address uh, on the logs. Of course, that's not such a good idea either, but that's not uncommon practice. Um, so. I've got a thick file of all the stories on this, and there's a lot of, it, what it, the good news is it, it led to a lot of concern over how secure our water systems from foreign hackers. I didn't see much discussion of actually what the problem was, which is 
one thing I'm dealing with in this talk or what to do about it. And then as soon as it, is, uh, it, it sh was shown to be a false alarm, then it, the issue just sort of died. So, so the, the question of the picture is, well, because this was a false alarm, does this mean we're safe? Well, probably not is my answer. Things are happening. Uh, there was a story of a week or two ago about an insider who was fired from a Key Largo uh, wastewater district, as it turns out, who um, uh, hacked the system. He didn't hack the, I, the control system, but he did hack and steal files from the uh, business system for the, uh, for the district. Uh, there's stories all the time about intruders physically breaking into a water treatment facility. Um, that's not uncommon either. Uh, but then recently, um, there was a panel discussion at another conference with um, representatives of the United States Con Con Computer Emergency Response Team, U.S. CERT, who said that, that um, and this is the quote in, the, in, in the most of the major news on it, U.S. energy and water utilities are under daily cyber attack because these are the guys who fly around the country when they get a call from a utility and, and they deal with it and they don't usually publicize the information. So one reason why I can't be precise on a lot of this is that when a water utility is hacked or thinks they're hacked, they call you a cert or they call a consultant and it's, none of it's public. So that's part of the problem too is we don't have really good reporting on incidents to really do, do an analysis. Um, but these cyber attacks include spear phishing, uh, you know, as you, many of you know, a directed email that looks legitimate from, say, the credit union for the water for the for the city or town the water utilities in, saying, "Hey, we need you to update your 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 credentials. Can you please type in your password and give us your social security number?" Uh, similar to the banking phishing, that trying to steal your credit card information, but in this case, they're trying to get their credentials so they can get into the business system at the water district. Uh, social engineering attacks, uh, micro someone calling up saying they're from Microsoft and we think there's a virus in your system, could you give us your password so we can check it out? And uh, that's why public education, of course, and training education is very important. Um, there are occasional reports we see uh, in the news about suspicious activity, but might be people taking pictures, you never really know. Um, Team Simro, which is a major uh, consulting firm on uh, IT security, uh, in 2008, um, did a, in, their, in one of their uh, dark nets, um, where they, like, like a big honey pot, where they record information, people trying to hit the system, they simulated SCADA systems, control systems, and saw a massive amount of activity all around the world, and this is the heat map showing the intensity of the requests or pinging of SCADA systems in their dark net from uh, Southeast Asia. Um, so it makes you wonder. They couldn't really pin it down. They were, all, they were coming from all over the world, from the U.S. as well. But it just makes you wonder who's, who's out there, who are all these people out there trying to uh, get into your, these uh, control systems. And SCADA, I should, uh, you may, may know, is Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It's the generic term for a control system that runs an industrial process or a process control or pump system or pipeline system, like in chemical, wastewater, drinking water, which I'm talking about, or um, it's usually termed industrial, but it could be any sort of process. Um, and those systems are a little different than regular um, uh, computers that we're used to dealing with in many ways. So uh, uh, industrial control system, sorry. Um, so, but there have been real hacks of control systems. The big, the big story is uh, Marucci uh, is a town in Australia. I don't know if that's the right spelling, actually. I've seen it spelled different ways. Where a, a, a former consultant who was fired uh, uses wireless to access the uh, pump system. This is a wastewater system. It released 800,000 uh, cubic liters of wastewater into the, into the uh, waterways. Harrisburg, these, there's, there's only a few incidents that are out there that are public. Um, so you keep hearing about the same ones all the time. Harrisburg. There was a, an infected laptop that an employee brought into the water system that infected the, com the business computers there, not necessarily the control system uh, from what, we're he what we hear. And it, but it was basically just normal run-of-the-mill malware trying to you know, use, the, you know, use the computer to send out spam. Uh, but again, a, a, an FBI official at another conference earlier this year revealed that there were three attacks on city SCADA systems in 2011. He wouldn't say where, what they were, wh whether they caused any damage. Um, but that's one of the little glimmers we get that things are happening. We're, we're not necessarily safe. There are attacks going on. I, and again, there's a lot of noise in the water industry. The things go wrong all the time. You fix them, a pipe breaks, uh, the water gets contaminated. You have to tell people to wait. Um, so it's hard to tell whether it's human error, whether it's mechanical error, whether it's computer error. Um, 
Um, and then, of course, right after the Illinois story broke, a hacker named PR0F uh, got upset that DHS, Department of Health, Homeland Security, was downplaying it, which is also interesting by itself. If they know more about what than we do what's going on, why they're downplaying it, saying, no, it probably wasn't before they even really, really knew. Uh, he hacked into, reportedly hacked into the South Houston uh, water utility and put uh, some pictures on Pastebin showing that he had gotten to the control system. Um, and, and said he was very easy to do because they had three, three character passwords, which again is not uncommon. Right. It, it, it was hard. Yeah. He alleged that he got in and, and there was beyond that there was no proof. That's true. But maybe he did, you know. Um, and the RISI, which is the Repository of Industrial Security Incidents, I think is the acronym, I apologize. Um, they, they do reports that cost thousands of dollars to get, so I don't usually get them, but you get summaries of them in some other reports that show an increasing incidence of, in general, of attacks on control systems. Um, now let's look at the other side. What about, it's not an attack necessarily, but it's a glitch. So I look for news stories on computer glitches, computer malfunctions, at drinking water systems, and this is a sample. There's lots of them. And of course, how do you really know that it was the computer? Did the computer do it through an automated process that you know went wrong, or did someone press the wrong button, or was it also mechanical? You don't really know for sure, but this is what the news reported says. So the types of things that can happen, so these are the types of things that a hacker could do, or a malicious intruder. Um, and I've seen this in my water system, similar things. Um, so Watertown, New York, 2009. Um, prevented the water tank from being filled, meaning there was less pressure in the water system. If you have less than 20 PSI pounds per square inch in the pipes, that allows bacteria to theoretically get into the pipes, and you're required by law in many places to or issue a boil water order, meaning the water is probably not safe unless you boil it first, whether or not you know for sure that it is or not. That's a precautionary thing. Uh, and then, then another glitch went in the other direction in Howard, Michigan, and caused the water tank to overflow. Uh, Water production stopped cold. False water pr pressure reading meant the pumps were turned up higher, meaning it blew out some water mains. So I'm not, th the details aren't as important as seeing the range of things that can happen. Um, also, if there's an emergency, uh, prevented the reverse 911 calls from going out uh, alerting people. That's bad too. So even if a hacker didn't make an attack on the water quality, they could exacerbate an addition, an, an exist, another attack or, or another part of an attack by removing the notice to people. Water bills, I have a whole other talk and research on, on water meters, and that's a whole other interesting area, wireless water meters and computerized water meters. Erroneous shutoff notices, and the Lewiston one is the least, the hardest one to get a handle on. There's some glimpses in the news that, um, that again, nothing public and nothing really released by any public body, but um, that the chlorination was shut off, making the water undrinkable. And that's one of the worst things a hacker uh, uh, could probably do to a water system, is if you turned off the chlorination and also turned off the, 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 uh, the sensor that's supposed to tell you whether it's the chlorination's happening or not. Because without the chlorine, the water's not disinfected, and you get a lot, it can cause serious uh, disease uh, in the population. Potential attackers, again, overall, not just computer. Vandals, hacktivists, criminals, and this ha copper theft is, is, is epidemic in many areas of the country. Competitors, well, not, 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 not necessarily in water because it's usually a, a monopoly, but what if someone wanted to take over a water company in their area? Theoretically possible. Nation state actors, um, I'll get to that later. Terrorists, I'll get to that later as much. And insiders is, is actually the one, one defined one that you can check a box saying this has happened, as some of the examples I already showed you. Terrorists, okay. So uh, this is the first thing you think about, well, who would attack our water system outside of, of course, the person working in there who is the only one that we've, we've proven has done it so far. Uh, Al-Qaeda has threatened m publicly many times to poison the U.S. water supply, using those words specifically. Um, though people doubt that they can do it, but we know that they've been working on it because when the, when the U.S. invaded Afghanistan at... Um, uh, they, they, they raided a, uh, a training area in Tarnak Farms, and they found some diagrams, including that document right there, showing that they were doing research into biotoxins and that they actually had, uh, were, were uh, trying to accumulate certain biotoxins to use 
one of the things one of the things that can be used for is poisoning water. Of course, it's more likely they were going to use it to make a bomb that would explode it into the air. Um, that's usually their their best mo. But again, it could be used for for water. Um, terrorists, on the other hand, terrorists want they want a flash. They like like a big explosion. They want something in the news and water. Contaminating water isn't really that splashy in terms of uh, the news. So it's it's other people think it's doubtful that they would go this way even though they've threatened it. On the other hand, in the U.S., there have been homegrown terrorists who have actually threatened or planned and in some cases actually poisoned water supplies. Um, so, so it's not, you know, or, or damaged water supplies. So, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that a terrorist could, could uh, be, be thinking about or planning to do this. But in the red, I've got uh, you know terrorists in general in Al Qaeda, and some homegrown terrorists in, in specific have motive, and they may have the means. And Stuxnet, which you may have all heard, probably know know quite a bit about, which it was the first uh, super sort of virus that was directed specifically at control systems, even though that one was directly designed, at, uh, as far as anyone can determine, to go at the the um, the centrifuges at the Iranian uh, chemical um, uranium plant. Um, it, it can be used as a model, perhaps, by other people to to uh, attack other control systems. Nation state actors, again, enemies of the U.S., uh, uh, North Korea, Iran, uh, China. Although they, a lot of them are the ones I listed here are involved in in in, in hacking, in uh, stealing information through IT uh, uh, means. Uh, most of them want it's, it's for espionage, it's for trade secrets, it's for monetary, it's cybercrime, uh, uh, terrorists, and and, and their uh, fellow travelers such as uh, cyber Hezbollah um, haven't shown the capability to, to use um, the internet uh, or IT for actual physical terrorism, but they 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 know how to use it like everyone else does, and they and, and they a lot of it is very sophisticated. Insiders, again, that's the only real documented uh, incidents of um, uh, someone actually attacking a water system from the examples that I've already mentioned to you. Um, also, there's been some reports that, that Al-Qaeda or other groups um, have been trying to recruit insiders to help them attack water plants. And again, that, that information is very sketchy because it's not meant to be public. It, some of this leaks out here and there. Potential of act vectors, I won't read all these. I mean, it's... As you know, uh, attacking is easier than defending because if you're defending, you have to win every time. If you're attacking, you just have to find that one hole and, and get into it. Um, so I'll, I'm gonna, I have three slides after this where I deal with some of the three more likely uh, contenders, um, USB um, and, and some of the other ones. Internet. Okay, um, there's been a lot of, there's been some studies out and news reports over how visible are SCADA in, you know, or control systems in general on the internet. And a uh, graduate student named Leverett uh, released a report a few months ago, uh, actually his master's thesis, where he's able to find 10,000 SCADA systems uh, online using Shodan, which is a, a, a Google, which is a sp specific search engine designed to look for control systems. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of companies or industries will say, oh, no, we're not on the Internet. Well, a lot of them are. How many water systems are on the Internet? No one really knows for sure. That's a big research project which is outside of my scope right now, but that's, that's a question. Certainly many of them are because it's easier when you're upgrading your, your, from your old control systems, which are simple uh, process control, um, electromechanical switches was the big thing in the late 70s and 80s, to the current system, which is Ethernet-based. And the easiest way to link systems in more than one building is Ethernet. Uh, you know, it might be a closed Ethernet, but it, it, if it has an IP address, then you've got a problem because someone can find it. And that's usually what you see um, in, in a lot of these systems. Um, and you see and report, yes. In general, no. Um, it, again, it's easier and cheaper. Um, most experts in the field, and I'm not an expert in SCADA, but will say no, it's not necessary. Although, th one of the things I'm going to deal with later is there, for, for the water industry anywhere, there aren't, the standards are very weak and no one's enforcing them. So, so a water system's looking at, okay, there's are benefits for SCADA, or what do you call it, ICS, or process control. There's 
people get upset sometimes when they think you use the wrong term, but I'm using all interchangeably. Um, when you, when you um, use them, um, it, it's, it's cheaper. So you've got a lot of facilities and they get miles to cover. Do you want to run, you want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars running your own wires? No, it might be easier just to go along the cable system or just you know, get, a, get a router set up and go on the internet. So it's cheaper. Um, it's, it's easier because you get stuff off the shelf, boom, boom, you know, some, your integrator, as they're called, can, can configure it. Um, so, so it's a cost issue in many cases. Um, so they, they shouldn't be. That's, that's the one recommendation you can always make that will improve their security, get off the internet. It's not easy to do. If, if they've got hundreds of miles or dozens of miles of systems on public internet, you know, or through routers in, in their own internet even, but it's still on the, you know, on, on the ethernet, um, how much is it going to cost them to, to rip that all out and, and add their own wiring? So that's, that's an unanswered question that, that, that no one's really grappling right, right now. Um, right. Right. Yeah, a lot of them will also say that, no, we're not, our business network isn't connected to the SCADA network, and they're usually wrong because, as this gentleman said, it, it's just... It's just too convenient to be able to just punch a few buttons in the business office and get the SCADA information to put in your report or to do your, you know, or, or do your updates or to, to do your planning. So, so that's another, again, the, mis the, the misconceptions are out there because when I was running my plant uh, I, and, and I was starting to pay attention to this, I asked our manager, well, um, are we on the Internet? He goes, no. So I check. Well, we were because one of our pumping stations had an IP address that I could get from my home computer. And then I say, are we connected to the, to the office system? No. Well, they are. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, actually, the larger ones have more capital to deal with and, and have larger budgets. The major problem with most water systems are small, individual, and that's something I'll deal with a little later. Um, unlike the electric grid, which is all, in, you know, the three grids are interconnected. You get east, west, and Texas, and there are studies showing if you hit one or two nodes the right way, you can knock out the whole thing, or like, a like the blackout of 2003 or whatever. The water infrastructure is not the same thing at all. They're all... For the, for the most part, individually, you know, they're not connected. There may be connections, but if you, you can't knock out the whole water infrastructure at the same time. You'd have to knock each system out. But most of them are small, not much capital, and they don't have enough money to even, you know, upgrade the pipes and the, and the treatment plant. So they're looking at um, saving money or, or shaving costs wherever they can, especially if no one tells them to do it a certain way, they're going to take the cheapest way out of it. Um, because I know we looked at, well, we had radio controls from our water tanks uh, to the plant, which seemed fine. And then we looked at, could we go on the cable? So it just was a cost comparison. Do we do the cable? Do we run our own T1 line or something? Or do we just use internet? And then um, I was one of the three water commissioners. We said out of that, let the management do that. And then we found out they put it on the internet. So, you know, um, it, it's, the, the trouble is no one's really watching the store. And it, you're going to find it, dozens of different models out there. And, and there's really very little consistency. Yeah. Yeah. To some extent, I may not have gone. Okay. So let me let me r r bunch jump ahead now. So thumb thumb drives, Stuxnet. There's a recent report that they think it was a uh, Iranian double agent who, um, you know, brought. Put it on a thumb drive because the the, the uh, uranium facilities in um, in Iran were air, air gapped. They weren't on the internet, but the Department of Defense had the same problem in 2008, where uh, someone someone brought an infected uh, flash drive in and got into the classified network at DoD. So um, the other thing to tell people, you know, is that the, being off the internet is very important because it makes it harder, but it's not everything. Um, 
of course, other removal media. I've done, I, my, my regular day job is just regular IT, and I go to companies that um, have like totally pr prohibited any removal media, like financial management companies. Why, you wonder? Well, you know, even DVDs. You just can't, the only way you can transfer information is over the network. Um, a remote access. Now, Mark Mafrit from uh, I, EI Security um, was got a lot of uh, press last year, and I emailed him. Um, he did a pen test, of course, for an unnamed California water utility where we got in within a day and was able to control everything. And he said it was through remote access for an employee because a lot of them will allow employees remote access. So they're at home, and they can w monitor the water plant. Very convenient. Saves money. They don't have to go in the plant. They don't have to drive a few miles. But it's another big hole because then you're, what's your what's your what's your um, weakest link then? It's it's the who's got the weakest security? Who's got remote access? Um, and the, and that's where the fishing of the spear phishing can really really pay off, right? You just get them at home and they're not even thinking about protecting their water system because it's, oh, it's their home computer, so they're they're not thinking of security for for the water system. Um, and of course, allowing a contractor to remote in from Russia is probably not a good idea either. Um, VPN is, is an improvement, but of course that has no vulnerabilities. Um, of course, we have the recent RDP vulnerability from Microsoft that's being patched, or is it? You know, where is it being patched? Where isn't it? And I'll get to mobile phone apps. That's even more fun. Uh, mobile phones. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So now there's an, that was the profusion of mobile phone apps for controlling SCADA. So. And I've got a couple of them I've been trying to try out, but I don't have a SCADA system actually to run it against, so it's a little tricky. But uh, no, so there's, there's one of the examples right up there where you can, you can mirror your, um, you, you can do everything from your mobile phone that you can do sitting in front of the, um, the computer for the SCADA system. What, what could go wrong, right? Um, and uh, some of them are, have like SSL type security. And of course, that's an issue. Well, where's the credentials kept and where's the key and stuff like that. Uh, some experts have, have speculated this could be used to bypass all SCADA security, and the manufacturer of that particular system, who was criticized in a blog, responded back saying, "No, no, 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 you, that can't happen." So hopefully he's right. Um, so again, so that so it's convenient. So it's the usual argument: security versus convenience. And again, until something really happens at a water plant, this is going to continue, or until someone actually tells them, right, actually regulates it which I'll get to. Likely attack scenarios, of course, I'm not saying that just because they're on the internet or that it's a mobile phone or it's remote that the bad guys can get in. They have to know something about the system. I'm sure Mark had to do a little education about you know what systems are running, what's the treatment process. But again, if you can get into the, the, the human machine interface, which I'll show you in a minute, then it's really not, it's all point and click. It's really not that hard. Uh, potential effects of a cyber attack. Um, I won't read all this, but this is from a government report I'm going to reference uh, called Roadmap to Control System Security in the Water Sector, where they look basically, this is, this is basically anything you could think of that could cause a problem. You know, shut down the water, send too much water, uh, change the chemical mix, change alarm thresholds, uh, et cetera, uh, could, could happen. Uh, now, could you poison the water? Well, uh, again, chlorine. Almost all of them use chlorine, 99% use chlorine. So you could shut the chlorine off, as I said earlier, and then shut off the sensor or make the sensor that detects the, the chlorine uh, say that it's being sent out. So suddenly everyone's getting non-chlorinated water, which causes um, gastrointestinal uh, distress is its main, main symptom, which is diarrhea, which, which isn't that funny because people can die from it. And, you can, and the usual uh, marker for gastrointestinal, uh, for, for contamination, is E. coli, but that's just the, the, that's just the marker. There's maybe dozens or hundreds of other contaminants in there as well that are breeding in a non-chlorinated water supply. So, but again, that only works for a short period of time because as soon as it's detected, which could take a while, it depends on how good the first responders are and the medical community in the town are to get back and then, trick, then figure out, did it come from a restaurant? Was it a water break over here? Was it some other problem here? Was it the food at the restaurant? Was it a food at Shaw's? Um, they, you know, it, it only works for a short period of time, but that still is very serious, especially if the news is that it was caused by you know, a terrorist attack or something. Um, but again, the, the easiest way, 
I think it's, if you're going to try to poison a water supply, it's easier to just directly do it, and there have been studies on this. And it's very hard, actually, to, to, to poison an entire water supply. You need an enormous amount of chemicals. You have to study where, what the hydraulics are and exactly where to do it. But again, it's not, it's not really rocket science. It's simple calculations. Uh, the American Water Works Association Journal uh, re uh, reported a study on this in January 2005 uh, where an, someone who's more expert in it, in it than I d did a study and did some calculations and figured out, okay, for these contaminants, you need X amount. Uh, for a generic water system, you look at the main trunk lines, you look at where the pump station is, you look at where the where these storage tanks are, and, and you get general ideas of the best places to put it to contaminate most of the water. More likely, though, and that's what this diagram is, and there's a number of studies on this, is you look at a high-value target, like, say, the Pentagon, the White House, uh, the FBI headquarters, City Hall, a school, depending on what your goals are. If you're a terrorist, you're trying to inspire terror, obviously. What? Okay, um, and, and that takes a smaller amount, but again, you have to know where, basically, which way the water is going, but by using a relatively smaller amount, and again, there are studies on this, exactly how to plan it, you, you can be in a building nearby and push, push the water into the system or a hydrant, which are usually not secured, and that's a whole other money, money problem, and there's no reason to do it in most cases, most people would think. Um, so I would think if you're trying to poison water, that'd be easier. But again, if you're trying to expire terror and show that, aha, we've got control of your water systems, it would take you years to do the recon of, of X amount of water systems and you know, shut off the chlorine or change the chemical mix, but it's not impossible. Uh, the national water infrastructure, perhaps I should have brought this up earlier, but again, it, as someone brought up in the questions, but it's, it's, it's fragmented. Uh, there's 155,000 of them. Uh, most, of them most of those are small. About 50,000 of them are the ones we usually see in a small town or a, lar or, or a city called community water systems. And there's a lot of really, really small ones peppered across the country. 8% um, of them are the large cities or, or large districts uh, that, that serve most of the population. Um, so you can't take the whole thing down, as I said. Um, but the common vector is chlorine, which comes, keeps coming up. If they could find a way to poison the chlorine, then you could get, which is interesting because chlorine is also a poison, but uh, that, that you could, that's the only way you could really attack the whole thing at once. Again, it's not impossible, but it's highly improbable. Um, but the bigger problem why this won't be fixed by the water district soon, anytime soon, is they've got a, they're a trillion dollars behind in fixing the infrastructure, the, the pipes, the treatment plants, the storage tanks, um, the SCADA systems. Um, and, and there's a lot of noise. So there's 24,000 water main breaks a year that leak 7 billion gallons of water. This causes dozens of water waterborne disease outbreaks a year. So there's a lot of noise. So, so the Onion ran a story talking about the highway system saying, uh, they had someone from Al-Qaeda saying, hey, we're not going to attack your, your, your highway, your transportation system, in America, because it's so screwed up already, no one would believe us if we said we broke it. And it's only, that's only half true. He's only, I mean, that's only half a joke. I mean, he's, so if someone attacked our water system and they didn't take claim for it, we wouldn't really know because things happen all the time. Um, but, but they need a trillion dollars over the next 20, 30 years. Uh, the, the American Water Works Association just came out with this report, Buried No Longer, building on a report I wrote a few years ago for Massachusetts that $8 billion was needed in Massachusetts over the next 20 years to fix the pipes, to upgrade the infrastructure, um, uh, the treatment plants, to meet new treatment standards. So, so the, the infrastructure as a whole has got, has got a problem. Yep. That are still 100 years old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some other? Yes. Probably about two thirds of that are the pipes. Um, the next big chunk would be uh, the treatment plants, um, it, it, which are which are old. So its age is driving most of this, and then obsolescence, and then wear and tear. But the treatment plants have to be upgraded because there are constantly new requirements they have to meet from the EPA to as they discover more problems with water quality, and they they increase uh, what you know the the number of things that have to be tested for. Yes.
Right. Um, I haven't found anything that answers that exactly, um, but there are there there there's there's uh, task forces on food safety uh, by the food industry. Uh, that's where that Tarnac uh, report came from. They were looking at food food quality, and so they were acknowledging they have to look at water quality as well. Uh, but I, I haven't found anything that really. I mean, it depends on the situation, um, but uh, but that's a very good point because uh, it, it if you contaminate the water, even if you contain the contamination or re reduce it, what's it done to the food supply in the meantime? Like the restaurant or the coffee at the, at the, at the uh, convenience store? Exactly. Yeah, there, there, are, there are a lot of dominoes it can knock over. Um, but yeah, I, I found some studies that relate to that, but it's, um, it, it's hard to, you know, I haven't found one study that really pinned it down. Um, so I, I guess most people are general, I'm running out of time now, but um, so generally, you know, how it works is you've got the source, you're pumping it to a treatment plant. Where you're pumping it to the distribution system. Uh, what's not used in the distribution system every day goes into the treatment uh, storage tanks. And um, and the the bottom diagram sort of shows a, an idealized diagram of the control system for a dispersed system, which again hey, it says internet. So that's that's you know that's that's how they think it's done. Uh, the people who uh, who design these things. Um, and again, the, the requirements for water system are PSA pressure safe and available, like our CIA, uh, confidentially, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Um, control systems, again, without being too specific, uh, this, is, this is my old control system, my water plant up here, this big blue um, uh, console, which actually just collects a lot of different electrochemical displays and controls, the old pen recorder, where we saw the level of the water in the water tank, you got knobs, this is the good old days, you know, before computers, really. Uh, and it was replaced with this, this display right here. So here's the HMI, Human Machine Interface, where if you can get into that, so it's, it's just left there all 24 hours a day that's sitting there. You know, you know, before the operator has to use it, he's not punching in a password because he has to use it right away. So it's there. And you just point and click and you say, okay, the first thing you have to do is say how much water is coming in the facility. So you set it for like one million gallons a day or two million gallons a day. We were a small plant. And then, then there are algorithms for, the, for like the chlorination, which is now at the end of the plant, to say for this volume of water total over this amount of time, you need to put X amount of chlorine in. And then they have a sensor to report back to make sure that that's happening. And so there's a, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a control system loop that looks at that and the other chemicals and then it has to have a certain amount of time to go through the sedimentation beds and the filtration without going through the whole process here. Then you've got the waste uh, coming off here. Um, and it's got, to, it's got to follow a certain process. Okay. So, okay, I guess I already covered this for the most part. Supervisor control and data acquisition. Uh, Skater vulnerabilities are increasing. Okay, this is also very recent news. So, um, a digital bond. Uh, uh, a, a, a IT security consulting company looking at control systems had Project Basecamp um, where they try to shine a light on SCADA vulnerabilities and what's not being done. And so they, so they, they ins along with some other researchers, but they put a real focus on it and they identified vulnerabilities. Then they wrote um, modules for Metasploit and they're trying to create what they call a fire sheet moment for, 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 for SCADA systems where people would wake up in the business and say, hey, we've got to fix these things. And it's, I think they've been, going, they've been working this six to eight months and it hasn't happened yet. You just had a blog post, I think, earlier today or yesterday saying, you know, it, you know we're going to evaluate it in a year, but it, it, you know, it, we've got to get some attention to this. Um, the last point is that uh, they've, they've, they've nailed down some vulnerabilities and say AVB uh, SCADA systems that AVB says they're not going to fix because they say the systems are obsolete the people should just replace them. Well, what if they don't replace them? Then there's a known vulnerability in this uh, SCADA system that's not being patched. So they're being called forever day or I day bugs. So it gets scarier and scarier uh, because um, more vulnerabilities are being, you know, in the usual process for, for disclosure, and there's a debate on this I know, you know, usually, you know, a researcher will come up with a vulnerability that, that 
I think one approved process is you tell the manufacturer, give them X amount of time to resolve it. If they don't, then you make it public to put pressure on them. That's, that's one model uh, that, that seems, seems common. So in this case, digital bond, I think, uh, and also at DerbyCon, there was, a, I think, 1,000 that uh, uh, they, they found that they got out there. And, and so U.S. Cert's been putting out the, the, the announcements, and there's been some, some that have been fixed, and, but many haven't been. But there seems to be a growing pattern where they're not catching the vulnerabilities. So on top of water, you've got every other industry being affected by this where there's forever day vulnerabilities, which is, which is interesting. It's not a vulnerability, it's a design floor. But what's it, right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's built, it's, it's, it's not even, yeah, it's more than hard coded. It's, it's it, that's the way it's designed. Right, right. Yeah. Very good question. Yeah. And, and so without going through all, everything on this slide, they're, they're been increasing. The ones that have been discovered are increasing. Um, Okay, water skater security is weak, and this is where I should pay, pay more attention next time I give this talk. But so the Idaho National Laboratories in 2005 looked at a lot of different industries, and they compared them to a baseline uh, standard for control system security. And so out of 51 standards, American Water Works standards for the water industry failed 34. They, had, they, they were partially made 15 and they matched only two, which was the need to avoid power failures and the need for employee training. So I, I could list everything else, but it's everything else. They're not meeting, they're not meeting standards. Um, but that's not even really the important thing because no one's enforcing the standards. The AWWA standards are voluntary. There are technical fixes needed, as, as I've alluded to. Um, but again, they're, they're not simple. They're simple to say, you know, like take them off the internet. Okay, um, there's, um, you've got the SCADA uh, problems. Again, what if they're hard-coded problems like, like you mentioned? Um, what if the, the manufacturer doesn't give you a patch? So it, it, it's, it, no one's really, there's no thorough analysis of this for the water industry. Um, you've, uh, I forgot to mention modems earlier. A lot of them have, have legacy modems that were used by the, by the um, service people for the equipment that are still there on all the time. I mean, there's tons of things that aren't even documented. Okay, and to wrap up here, um, so there, there's been some attempt at progress. So in 2008, um, there was a task force put together that for a roadmap to secure control systems in every sector. There's like one for chemical, one for electrical, where, where most of the activity is happening. But this is the roadmap for secure control systems in the water sector. Came out in March 2008. <laughs> It was very honest in the sense that from their survey of the water industry, <coughs> the business case has not been made for security. So on top of the fact there's no money for it, and, it's, and they don't see a need for it. And of course, if they even saw a need for it, then they, they would need some, uh, quite a bit of money and, and retrofitting to make it all work. Um, it, some okay goals like remove, which, like remove from the internet. So here's their progress, here's their, their milestones. By 2008-2009, 80% of water sector executives recognize the ICS security is critical. No. Well, no one's done a survey, but I'm sure it hasn't improved. Um, none of these have been done. Let's see. Uh, integrate ICS security as a key goal in every project plan. No. I mean, I, I've, I've emailed uh, the, the, the head of this group and the American Water Workers Association um, person on security and they both say nothing's happened so there's no progress no one's in charge of implementing it three you know four years later and you know and there's no plan so my conclusions overall <coughs> boy need some water um, there's there are real threats um, things are happening as I as I documented to the extent that it could be uh, unfortunately the business case has not been made to the people in the field to do more uh, the roadmap is a you know, I like that picture. It's going nowhere. Um, no requirements. Even if the roadmap was going somewhere, or if the AWWE standards were good, no one's making them and making them enforce them. There's no oversight. Again, after 9/11, um, a, a Department of Homeland Security was created, <coughs> but the uh, EPA retained authority over water and wastewater. 
and they're not doing anything more um, than I was discussing here. <coughs> and there's no funding. So for anything to happen, it's a regulatory standards um, uh, exercise that needs to happen as well as uh, providing money. I'll be giving this talk to the uh, government's <coughs> uh, uh, task force on uh, ICS security in Atlanta on May 9th. I'll revise it somewhat to focus more on the, on the standards. Uh, but um, you know, I, I, one reason I've been giving this talk, I want to give this talk as a former water executive, I want to see more done on water security and UIT security folks are one part of the puzzle um, and, and we're going to get the word out and try to get more done in this field. Thank you.